for our mental teachers yes. to be able to mentor these pre-service students. But do they also, do our teachers also get pro, uh, I don't know what you call it, recertification points by mentoring these students? I'm sure they could get. I, I don't have anything in front of me that would okay. uh, to answer. Oh, and and uh, Dr. Ivy is telling me, yes, they do okay. uh, receive recertification points for that. Okay, thank you. So I have Ms. Evans. Uh, thank you. Yes, I want to uh, thank Ms. McLaughlin for taking this off consent so we could have a conversation about it. Um, I actually had some of the same questions Ms. McLaughlin did. Um, I was thinking about taking it off consent myself to, to get some of them answered, and then I, I was visiting uh, one of my schools today, and um, unconnected with, with this item was told what it, it, how great it was to have uh, these GMU interns. And um, the individual I was talking with was uh, saying that uh, there, there wasn't uh, as much this year and um, they're hoping to, to get more. So it clearly was, um, was much appreciated, particularly in terms of things like um, being used for, uh, for substitute teaching. Um, and certainly we, we know how um, much we, we, uh, we need to have um, people who can substitute teach. Um, I do see this as part of our effort as a board to review our contracts more carefully uh, and more thoroughly. And um, if you'll recall, uh, Ms. Corbett Sanders and I had a forum topic just last time uh, where we are going to work with the superintendent to uh, better define exactly what the board wants to see and how they want to see it, whether it's going to be an approval process, whether it's a uh, 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 pre, um, pre-signing notification, but um, I do think this board has made clear that, that we want to uh, get a better handle on contracts. So I have a feeling we'll be getting a lot more of these questions, and that's a good thing. Um, it's a good thing to be getting the answers and, and to have us, um, and whether this is a, it's, it's great that this is a long-term partnership, but if we haven't seen this contract before, well, you know, it's time to, to answer questions that the board has about it and then uh, hopefully move on. So even though um, I think this sounds like a, an, an excellent uh, program, um, if Ms. McLaughlin or other board members still have, want to see more details, I don't really see any harm in putting it off for another two weeks and making sure that, that anyone who does have questions about it can get them answered. Um, uh, unless, uh, Dr. Brabrand, you, uh, is there any harm to, um, to, to having this on consent two weeks from now and uh, get everybody? No, we could do consent two weeks from now and get the information out to the entire board um, so that you get all the information, all board members, and then those that have follow-up questions get them addressed. Right. Um, so, Mish, I think it would be worthwhile to, uh, for us to know a little bit more. It doesn't have to be um, exhaustive, but at least from my point of view, I would be interested to know, you know, where these interns go and, uh, you know, more or less uh, perhaps a few more details about how they're used. So, um, I, I, I love, so I love Evans, the answer. Are you to making this a motion to postpone? Uh, sure. I'll make a motion to postpone for two weeks. I, I move to uh, postpone this uh, agenda item until um, our next meeting on October 10th. 10th. Seconded by Ms. McLaughlin. Do we need to discuss I, this? I, I have nothing more to say about it. Um, thank okay. you. So, yes, Ms. Peterson. It won't be. So while we're getting information, I, I just wanted more specificity with respect to what is the commitment of these students with respect to how many hours they're working. Do we know that? Um, as it, um, that clarity isn't there. I understand. I see a lot of description with respect to what, how we're supposed to supervise these people in our schools, but I'm not seeing how, how many, how much time they could, should be working or what, whether there's a minimum and whether we're paying the same amount no matter what. So I, I, I would like there to be a, a bit more specificity. Okay. Ms. McLaughlin, followed by Mr. McNeil. 
Yeah, just in speaking to my uh, second to the motion to postpone, uh, I do look forward to uh, more information, Dr. Brabrand, and uh, appreciate as you talked about the transparency, and I appreciate what Mr. Moon said that you know we recognize this has been a 20-year relationship, but I also know that our school division and the school board always focuses on continuous improvement. And we are very fortunate to have multiple lawyers on this school board as well. And this is one of those contracts that just because this is the way we've always done it doesn't mean that this isn't maybe hopefully the role of the board, which is through good governance to bring information to you and Mr. Foster, our division counsel, to say, you know, wait a minute, for a long time we've been a great partner to George Mason, but what is this actually doing for us as a division at a cost of, as Mr. Um, Wilson said to me, I mean, almost $900,000 over a five-year period. That's, that's significant enough for us, I think, as a division to say, let's understand what, is there a mutual benefit here um, to the funding? So um, I do want some additional questions. I'll send them the email. I, I think Ms. Keith Kamara said it best. I don't understand where the money is all being allocated to uh, in terms of who's getting paid, who's not getting paid. And uh, I'll just end with the fact that the University of Maryland School of Social Work has 900 students approximately in it. 900 of us going out every year and working uh, essentially uh, three full days a week. And there was no money coming our way. Mr. Moon, uh, just I want to make sure just a couple of things. The second one is question and comment or suggestion. Uh, the first one is that contract seems to have a 90-day termination clause, uh, but you c we cannot terminate during a academic academic year. So basically, it sounds like uh, we can terminate after the first year by giving them a 90-day notice prior to June 30th. Uh, just to verify that for me later on when you get back to us. And then second, little, uh, which is more important question and, uh, and comment is that since we don't know what the price tag will be for the second and subsequent years, uh, because that will be the subject to parties mutual agreement through modification in writing, you know, I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that when the price gets fixed, they will brought, they'll be brought back to the school board because the school board will want to know. Who knows, price might go up or down. And, and so we don't know. So, you know, board will want to see that. I mean, that's my take on that. And hopefully superintendent will keep that in mind and bring it back to us. Yes, and as part of our transparency efforts, it, it is built in that when we do have changes to contracts, we do bring that to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moon. Ms. Kieskamar, your light's back on. Okay. So with that, I'll call for the vote. The motion. Yeah. That's what I was about to call for. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to postpone this agenda item until our October 10th meeting. That's unanimous with a number of people away from the table, which includes Ms. I'm sorry? Okay. Very helpful, thank you. Ms. Strauss and Ms. Hines away from the table. That motion carries. Item six, consent agenda. Actually, item 5.03, policy 8170, naming school facilities and dedicating areas of school facilities or grounds. This item has been postponed and will be considered on October 10th, 2019. Item six, consent agenda. Our adopted rules of parliamentary procedures. Robert's rules provide for a consent agenda listing several items for approval of the board by a single motion. Many items listed have gone through board review and documentation has been provided to all board members and the public in advance. Items may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any board member prior to the meeting. 
six point zero one approve the alternative accreditation plans for submission to the virginia board of education as detailed in the agenda item six point zero two adopt the newly revised twenty nineteen fairfax county purchasing resolution previously adopted by the board of supervisors subject to the content conditions detailed in the agenda item item six point zero four appoint individuals to serve a one year term on the challenge materials interdepartmental review committee as detailed in the agenda item Item 6.05, confirm the separations for the period beginning July 1, 2019 and ending July 31st, 2019, and for the period beginning August 1, 2019 and ending August 31st, 2019. Item 6.06, adopt the policies on the no change memo as detailed in the agenda item. Item 6.07, appoint individuals to serve on committees as detailed in the agenda item. Is there any objection to approving the consent agenda? Hearing and seeing no objection, the consent agenda is approved. Seven, new business. The following are new business agenda items. There will not be a vote tonight on these items, but action is scheduled at a future meeting. 7.01, award the contract for the automatic temperature control system replacement at Rose Hill Elementary School to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. Item 7.02, award a contract to the Franklin Sherman for the Franklin Sherman Elementary School roof replacement project to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facil facilities and transportation services to execute, deliver, and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. Item 7.03, award a contract for the Poe Middle School replacement project to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute, deliver, and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. Item 7.04, award the contract for the roof rooftop unit replacements at Fair Hill Elementary School to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. Item 7.05, award the contract for the rooftop unit replacements at Bush Hill Elementary School to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. Item 7.06, was removed to action at the request of the board member and we've already taken action on that item. 7.07, .07, approve the division-wide comprehensive plan as detailed in the agenda item. 7.08, adopt the policy to address possession administration and distribu distribution of cannabis oil and THCA oil as detailed in the agenda item. Eight, superintendent matters. Next on the agenda is superintendent matters and I call on Dr. Braben. I'll be I'll, I'll be brief, Chairman Corbett Sanders. Uh, October second is International Walk to School Day. Really hope uh, we're going to encourage all of our students, employees, to bike or walk to work and to school. Many schools are working with the PTA and PTO to coordinate walking or biking groups for the event. October second, International Walk to School Day. Region five has been doing a lot of work around hurricane support. You know part of Portrait of Graduates collaborating and being an ethical and global citizen. 32 of our schools in Region 5 united to support the humanitarian crisis that's occurred in the Bahamas with Hurricane Dorian. Chantilly, Fairfax, Westfield, and Woodson Pyramids are doing a uh, joint uh, fundraising through a GoFundMe page with proceeds going to UNICEF. So individuals who want to contribute to that fund can do so through October 4th working with those schools. And then finally, our voter registration folks, our League of Women Voters, were here at the board, I think at the very last meeting, and they continued to do voter registration events. Uh, this time at Mount Vernon and McLean, registered 40 new voters, and we continue to uh, work with them and get excited about seeing our students uh, become eligible to be a part of our democratic process. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brabrand. Ms. Schultz. prepared. Um, I'm sorry that Kimberly left. Um, I had an interesting conversation with her prior to our board meeting start. Um, I had gotten a um, 
this is difficult, a rumor in the community that um, we may have hand selected her and that we may have done it in the name of equity. Um, I want to assure everyone in the community um, that I have uh, been meeting with Kimberly before um, she joined us as a student. Um, uh, I met with her in the spring and in the summer, um, including with Benny, um, our prior school board member. And um, most years I go to the student representative um, elections. Um, I didn't make it this year, but I usually sit through the whole thing. It's a very competitive process and um, she has earned it outright. And so any notion um, that this board has anything to do with the selection of the student um, uh, representative needs to um, be, be tamped down. Um, I encourage students who are considering participating in the election process to, to join and see how competitive it is. Um, but I, I have appreciated working with her before she joined the board um, as a student representative and um, I appreciate her, her contributions since, um, since she has joined us. Um, I do wanna note um, that it, it took me all of about 10 minutes um, to do um, a calculation um, on every CIP since I've joined the board. Um, Langley has been at 84%, 82%, 90%, 83%, 81%, 89%, and 79% respectively. McLean has been at 112, 118, 129%, 110%, 113%, 122%, and 126%. And interestingly, Herndon has been at 116, 121, 114, 117, 102, 95, and 102. So I do think that what we did tonight is a travesty, not because it doesn't deliver a, a, a solution, but because um, we, we don't earn transparency um, and accountability with the public when we do stuff like we did and it didn't promise a solution. I am worried when we talk about equity, um, Dr. Brabrand happened to mention International Walk to School Day. I still have 40 square miles in Fairfax County in the name of the former Clifton Elementary boundary that has no elementary school, no middle school, no high school. Those children were never able to participate in International Walk to School Day because they have no services. There are no sidewalks, there's no basketball courts, there's no tennis courts, um, there's no community center. And so in the name of equity, um, we need to address equity for all students and not turn a blind eye to problems just because they've persisted over time. Um, I, I relish for the children who are able to do um, International Walk to School Day, but every single child who was stripped out of their Clifton Elementary boundary and sent to far-flung schools that are now in trailers, as predicted, that are now in modulars, as predicted, that are now in overcrowded schools, as predicted, none of them get to participate in International Walk to School Day. So as we go forward as a school board, whether it's currently constituted or constituted um, newly beginning January 1st, the question of equity is different in each community. Um, we celebrate uh, equity in some areas of this county and we don't in others because in some areas of this county, it means longer bus rides, more overcrowded schools, inability to participate in things like International Walk to School Day and having a blind eye turned to overcrowding that persists, not for one CIP, not for four CIPs, but for 10 or 15. Mr. McAvoy. Ms. Farron, I care about. Uh, it's been great finishing up back to school nights over the last two weeks. I also started my school visits. I had, a, was it last week, the Claremont Elementary School, and this week, the Springfield Estates, where I got to participate in some fun activities. Um, I, uh, I will be hosting my Kofax Coffee, 9.30, at Grounded Coffee, um, October 1st. And uh, Happy New Year to all those celebrating Rosh Hashanah. Mr. Min. I yield my time to Ms. Evans. Ms. Keys Gamar. Ms. McLaughlin. Very quickly, tomorrow morning, I believe several of my colleagues will be joining me along with uh, former Congressman Tom Davis and former 
State uh, Senator Jean Marie Devalize Davies uh, for a uh, eye screening that's being done by a nonprofit organization called Connexus at uh, our um, community schools, uh, Mount Vernon Woods Elementary. And the reason I profile it is because uh, it's just a wonderful example as Fairfax County Schools continues to develop um, our community schools model for how we can provide essential wraparound services to students. Uh, Connexus has been doing this down with the City of Richmond Public Schools and uh, Ms. Uh, Corbett Sanders, uh, this is your school as I understand it, or is it Ms. Darna Kovacs? Okay. Ms. Darna Kovacs. Um, but I know you were helpful in talking with them as well when they reached, uh, reached out to us about this pilot. So um, I, Ms. Schultz, I think you're joining us tomorrow, right? Uh, the Connexus eye screening. I have it on my schedule. I okay. have another conflicted community, so I'm going to see if I can swing both. Okay, yeah. Um, so, but I, I just wanted to spotlight that for my colleagues who might not be aware because I, I really am excited to see how we can again help children. Uh, if, if we improve their, their vision, we improve their ability to achieve uh, academically in our schools. Uh, the only other thing I, I wanted to say is to Robinson and Lake Braddock, you have your homecomings uh, tomorrow evening. I uh, wish you luck um, as you play your opponents. Uh, since you reside in my district, I get to cheer for you. Uh, and then uh, I, I also want to uh, just express my appreciation to the entire uh, Woodson uh, community that helped with the feeder night. Uh, as some of you were aware, uh, it, it's really fantastic. I, I would love to see every one of our high schools do this where at the football game they invite all of the feeder elementary schools and the middle schools to come. The kids get to run the field, the principals came, and uh, just the, the, there was activities and, and food beforehand, but it's such a great way to build uh, spirit within the community. So that was, uh, I think, just a, a great event to see. And Dr. Brabram was there with us, and of course he was just intent on finishing first. Uh, so he sprinted across that 100 yard field. <laughs> Those elementary kids are pretty fast. They, they are. Several of them beat me. Yep. And so we ran the full 100 yards and then back. So that was a 200 yard dash he essentially did. Um, but anyway, I know it's late, so I won't go on other than to say uh, that I appreciate people who came out last night to the office hours. And as you've heard from the board, please always let us know how we can uh, answer your questions and serve you well. Bye. So, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if you're not uh, heading to Conexus uh, tomorrow morning to see um, uh, Congressman Davis and Jean Marie Davis, uh, come on out to the Sully District office hours in the morning, 10 a.m. Uh, at the Greenbrier Shopping Center Starbucks. Uh, these will be office hours and folks, see folks there. Uh, and um, that's all I'm going to add for tonight. It's pretty late. So uh, thank you again, Madam Chair. Ms. Evans. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, thank uh, Federal Judge Douglas Ginsburg for coming out and uh, speaking at Constitution Day on October 17th at Justice High School. Um, the, uh, he spoke to a number of government students who had great questions and um, he had excellent answers. So uh, we very much appreciate his, his um, putting on that, that program. Uh, it was great to see so many people out at the uh, Justice High School Bands at the Beach fundraiser for uh, the Justice High School Scholarship Fund. It's not too late to contribute. Um, feel free to, to do that. It goes to a very worthy cause. And um, I'm, I've scheduled a uh, meeting with P uh, Mason District PTA and PTO presidents for uh, Sunday, October 13th. And I do hope that all the PTA presidents can come out uh, for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Evans. So um, tomorrow evening, we will be celebrating the 60th anniversary of Wainwood Elementary. So I look forward to uh, visiting with people there, as well as the Saratoga Fall Festival, which is always a wonderful event in the community. And next week, we will be um, having a joint meeting with the Mount Vernon Council of Civic Associations Education Committee 
to uh, begin talking about the priorities for that community over the next year. And um, want to thank the uh, the base commander, the garrison commander, to for inviting uh, many of us to join in in the Port Belvoir Oktoberfest next week as well. I think I'm going to see you there, Dr. Braybrand. So with that, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>